gets a bit scary the way up top and then the oceans then the it was all ocean all the way I see. We thought it was just a short ride across to um, Papua New Guinea, but it wasn't. Dormagee is an indigenous community in far northwest Queensland. Our people used to live out on the coastline first, when they were brought in here by the missionary people, and we made a home there. My grandma, she couldn't speak her language in the community. Like if you were speaking to a white person, you couldn't speak your language, you had to talk English. That's where a lot of the um, culture was lost. Kids couldn't learn it because of the missionaries. The remoteness and loss of culture have led to a lack of direction with little to no access to opportunities and employment. Social issues are common. That's one of the main issues in our communities, alcohol. A lot of our kids get connected up to, you know, and they get up to a lot of mischief. You know, they have got hardly nothing to do. And most of them burn themselves in jail as they grow older. The women of Dormagee might have lost purpose, but they haven't lost their compassion. Working with My Pathway, Veronica learned about women in PNG and how they have little to no access to feminine hygiene products. They, they use coconut fibres. The teacher um, said, you know, like she did, she don't have very many young girls, especially the 13, 14 year olds go to school because, because they haven't got what we got in Australia. The Dormagee women were given an opportunity to sew moon sick care bags, washable menstruation pads, designed to give women in disadvantaged countries the chance to step outside the taboo of menstruation. We put our hands up straight away and said that, you know, we'd help. Um, my mum had one of the old pedal machines. We learned to sew it. We sew out and skirts or dresses. We cut the material for the outside. Then we'd cut the towel in for the inside. And then we'll have the plastic. It's just put on the top. We'd sew the toweling to the underneath part of the material. Then we'd pin the little plastic on the top and then we'd sew around. It was our idea that to make our own soap, our traditional soap, you know, and put it in the bags. We put four washable pads, one face washer, one soap, and um, two undies. As they continue to make moon sick care bags for the women in PNG, Veronica becomes more passionate about the work that they are doing and wants to go beyond sewing the bags. I just asked if we could, like, maybe one day go up there, you know, and see how they work together at their community and show them how to make the pads. I didn't know what was going to happen. Excited to be able to um, get feedbacks from the young girls and their parents, you know. The way we were treated when we first got there, you know, we were, they treated us like we were their sisters. Well, it was just awesome, fun. I had fun with them. I mean, they, they looked at like my sisters. Uh, making pets in Mabutuan helps us to save money and also change lives of younger girls. They make their future easy. They can go to school. It's important for us to make, we can make plenty because there's other villages asking for us. We can make them, sow them ourselves and we can give them out to them. It's exciting because it's first of its kind to Papua New Guinea and also to the Western province. We shared some skills and they shared some of their skills. It made us feel proud to help treat them to so that they can be able to help their own people in their community. Empowered by her trip to PNG, Veronica wants to give purpose back to her community. 
we needed to have a supervisor for somebody to supervise the police. So they asked me if I wanted a job. So I said, yeah. We'd love to be able to help the other women, young girls. So that they could get skills from us, you know. If they come in and learn to sew the pads and bags. Like might be the next trip, it might be two younger ones going over.